In this video, we learn to do real-time 3D post detection. And on top of that, we'll build a post classification system, which will recognize three different poses. So this video will be divided into three parts. In the first part, I'll cover a bit of theory, how post detection works, what approach we are going to use, how internally the things are going to work. And in the second part, we're going to go over the code, how to do real time post detection on images as well as on real time video feeds. In the third part, we're going to combine some heuristics and build a post classification system. So this video is going to be really interesting. Make sure to stick around and let's get started. This is what post detection looks like. We get uh, landmark points across key body joints. So like we get a point around the shoulders, around the elbows, around the knees, around the hips. So all the key body landmark points are going to be uh, pointed out by our model. And post detection has a number of interesting applications like exercise monitoring. So we can have a post detector that can not only count the number of sit-ups or the number of push-ups, but it can also guide you regarding how to do it correctly. And it also has some other applications like augmented reality based cloth overlay over your body or maybe game controls using your body poses or hand gestures. And it goes on and on. So post detection is actually a part of a wider computer vision problem called key point detection. And just like keyboard detection, we have three other common computer vision problems, which are image segmentation, image classification, and object detection. I'll briefly describe each of these. So in keyboard detection, we try to localize some predefined points or landmarks. In image segmentation, we try to extract or segment out or find the exact boundary of your target object or class. In image classification, we try to classify the whole image as belonging to a particular class. And in object detection, we try to classify and localize the objects in the image. So this is a brief description of each of these major problems in computer vision. And in fact, all of these four major problems have a lot of subcategories. For example, take a look at this website, paperswithcode.com. In this site, you will find about 874 uh, tasks or subcategories uh, that are in computer vision alone. So for example, in image classification, you will find a lot of subtasks under it. And then in semantic segmentation, which itself is a category of image segmentation, you will find a lot of tasks under it. And by the way, this is actually a rough categorization. So take it with a grain of salt because there are a number of applications or fields mixed into it. Now let's get back to our task. Now post detection is part of keypoint detection which I just told but along with post detection there are two other interesting categories called hand landmark detection or hand keypoint detection and facial landmark or facial mesh detection. We will discuss both of these in upcoming lectures. Moving on. So we will be using the media pipe library to all of this. So media pipe is a really interesting computer vision library or tool built by Google, which allows you to use real time and state of the art computer vision models. So this is what I'm talking about. You can do face detection, face mesh, iris detection and a lot of other things. And we will learn to do some of this in the upcoming tutorials. Now moving back to pose detection. Now there are a number of other libraries like OpenPose or PoseNet which allows you to do pose detection. But what makes MediaPipe's implementation stand out is that it is really fast. It is computationally inexpensive that which means it can run easily on a low edge devices like your mobile or laptop and it runs really fast. And there are a number of reasons that makes MediaPipe's implementation so fast. One of them being it employs a special detection scheme. It actually employs a two-step detector, meaning it is a detection plus a tracking approach. So the thing is, oftentimes object detection is computationally expensive and object tracking is relatively inexpensive because in tracking you already have a previous bounding box and you have to just go forward from there. So detection normally searches the object in the whole image while tracking takes the information from the previous detected end. So tracking is fast and detection is uh, pretty much uh, computationally expensive. So they employ a special detection plus tracking mechanism for this. Now this is a two-step detector 
Inside, what happens is that first time the object detection model runs and it crops and finds the person. So once the person is found out and the ROI is a crop, it is passed to the tracker and the tracker continuously tracks this person moving in all the future frames. This way the tracker does not have to look in the entire image. But once uh, that person is lost or disappears out, the tracker calls that person detector back again and the person detector then again detects the person and passes it to the tracker. This way, this combination of detection plus tracking makes it extremely fast. Now, once the, you have an ROI, you have another machine learning model. This is the landmark detector. This allows you to draw or find the key body landmarks of the person. And this is what it gives you. It gives you X, Y or Z coordinates and some other useful information that you can use to draw out this entire key point skeleton. So this is how the whole pipeline works. So these are the 33 landmarks that MediaPipe's post detection model gives you. You can extract any individual landmark from this uh, skeleton once you have it. And finally, MediaPipe's whole post detection implementation has three variations. And all of these can be found in the post detection class. So they have trained three variations of the model from placebos.light to placebos.heavy. All of these gives you a different balance between the latency and the performance. With the heavy, you get the best performance or the accuracy, but at the cost of latency. With the light, you get the lowest latency, but with the cost of performance. So this is how this whole thing is structured. Let's get to the code now. So this is the notebook that we'll be using in this video lecture. And the whole notebook is highly documented and commented. If you're confused on anything, there's a comment that will guide you appropriately. I've also written a detailed blog post that will guide you further upon how to do things and such. So now let's start with the code. All right. So what I'm going to do first is when I'm going to import uh, the required libraries. So remember, these are the points. So I've put this uh, image here to guide you if you want to extract any individual landmarks after you've gotten uh, the whole landmark result. All right, first, what we need is uh, import all these required libraries. Of course, you would need to install OpenCV and MediaPipe by doing pip install OpenCV contrib Python and pip install MediaPipe to get those two uh, in, on your system. After that, you can run this and this works fine. All the imports are done. Now, the first thing that we need to do is initialize the post detection model. And for that, what we have is first we're going to do mp.solution.post initializing the post class. And then we're going to set this post detection function passing some uh, variables here. And then we're also going to uh, initialize this drawing class. This will help us annotate or, you know, like draw the skeleton out for the whole post detection thing. You can also do that with OpenCV, but this will help you, you know, like draw out the whole the skeleton without doing any uh, custom processing with OpenCV. So what I need to discuss right now is these variables. So all of these four uh, variables are really useful. So the first variable, static image mode, this is by default false. And this allows you to shift between an image mode or a video mode. So remember when I told you that MediaPipe has a special detection technique in which it uses a tracker and a detector. And the only time the tracker fails, the detector is called again. But if you set this variable to true, then every time the detector will be used, the tracker will never be used. So the thing here is that if you're using uh, this with videos, if you're using post detection with videos, you want to set this to false and by default it will be false. So this is ideal because you want the implementation to be fast and the only way that will be is that if the tracker is used most of the time. But if you care about uh, the performance or the accuracy, you know, like uh, really much, so you might want to uh, set the detector to run every time you want to, you know, like forget about the tracker if you want very high performance regardless of uh, the speed. So this is what this variable is controlling. And this is uh, ideally set to true when you're working with a bunch of unrelated images that are not connected in any way. So this is maybe then only then you want to set this true. Otherwise, let it be false. So the second variable is minimum detection confidence. This is the minimum detection uh, required confidence that you will set the model to be, which means 
if you set this variable to 0.5, this will mean if the prediction is higher than 50%, if the model thinks that it has detected a person with a confidence higher than 50%, only then it will give you a result and otherwise it will continue searching and looking in the image for a possible person. So this is what uh, this detection minimum detection confidence controls. The minimum required confidence to consider any sort of detection as a true uh, detection. And so similarly we have the minimum tracking confidence. This is the minimum required confidence that a tracking model must have in order to consider uh, a track a valid one. Otherwise it will call the detector back again because it will think the tracking failed and the detector needs to find the person again. Uh, increasing this value will cause you to give you, will give you a more robust pipeline but at the cost of latency, the speed will, will slow down a bit. So the third variable is the model complexity. Remember when I told you that Media Park has trained three different models uh, and all of these have a different balance between the complexity or the performance and the speed or the latency. So this is where you select which one do you want. By default, you will have the best one, uh, which is one which will give you the best balance between the performance and the latency. If you want a bit more uh, performance or a bit more or higher accuracy, then you might want to select two, this model. This is the, uh, you know, like the model with the highest accuracy, but it will uh, run a bit slower. And similarly, if you want more speed and, but at a cost of performance, you will select zero. So this is where you control which model you want to use. Finally, the last variable is the smooth landmarks variable. And this controls if you want to smooth out uh, the results. And by default, it's set to true, which is a great thing. So what it does is that it smooths out the landmarks. What happens oftentimes, if you have ever used a delayed landmark detection model, you will see a lot of flickering. So when you detect landmarks on your face, you'll see the points moving about. So this happens a lot because every time an image pass a new landmark, uh, prediction is made and not each point is every time consistent with the pixel wise consistent. So there's a lot of flicker. So this is why this smooth landmarks, what it does is just smooth is out using some metric like moving average or something like that. So this is a really nice thing. All right. So now what we need to do is read an image and plot it out. So I'm going to use OpenCV's CV2.imre to read an image and then I'm going to set uh, the figure size uh, and then I'm going to use matplotlib to plot out the image. So this is the syntax for that. As you can see, I'm doing a bunch of other things. I'm uh, putting the title out. I'm uh, turning off the axis. I'm uh, reversing uh, channels because OpenCV reads an image in BGR. Matplotlib works in RGB. So that's why you need to reverse the channels. So this is what I'm gonna get um, when I read the image. So this is where I'm gonna uh, use the post detection model on. So now let's get to the fun part. Perform the post detection on this particular image. So what we're gonna do is first I'm gonna process the image. Uh, call this fun function pose dot process and this is going to perform the whole pose detection and it's going to give me the pose detection results in this result variable and it's going to be a, an object which I can extract the results from. So but before that what I need to do is first convert this uh, because OpenCV reads an image in BGR and MediaPipe expects the image to be in RGB. So what you first need to do is convert the color space from BGR to RGB and this is what I'm doing here. There are two ways to go about it. You can do either do this or do some sort of thing like which I've just uh, done here, save it in a new variable. So this both way uh, you will get uh, convert the image from BGR to RGB. All right. So once we've done the conversion, what we're going to do is iterate through all the landmarks and I'm for the, just the sake of printing, I'm just going to print out first two landmarks that I'm going to detect. So if you look above here, the first two that I'm going to detect is going to be the nose, the zero, which is the first one, and the left eye in there, which is going to be, I guess, this uh, point, where, where is it? Yeah, this one. So this point or this point. So these are the first two landmarks that uh, I'm going to uh, print out here by using, by iterating through all the landmarks. And then for I in range two, I'm going to first, uh, I'm going to uh, display the name of that landmark. And then what I'm going to do is index through the result and uh, give out the whole value of those two landmarks. So I'm going to uh, run this result and this is what I'm going to get. So for this nose landmark point, I'm going to get these four variables and all of these four variables are associated with this landmark. And for this landmark, the second one, I'm going to get its own four variables. 
So these are the four variables which I'm getting for each particular landmark. So all, for all uh, the 33 landmarks, I'm going to get these four variables. And if, even before I've explained what these variables mean, you, you probably know that the XY refers to the XY location on the image of each landmark. So th this is really common. I mean, you probably know that the XY is pro uh, probably mean the XY uh, landmark point. But what does the Z mean or what does the visibility variable mean? So let me explain uh, uh, this to you a bit. So Z means the depth. Remember this whole video or this whole lecture is actually titled 3D post detection, not 2D post detection. So not only we're getting XY coordinates, we're also getting the depth, the Z coordinate. But how is this happening? We're not actually using a depth camera. We're just using a normal 2D camera. And so how the model is figuring out the depth or the Z variable from just a static 2D image. Now, this is a there is a neat trick to this. And how the model is doing that is actually calculating the origin as the midpoint of hips. And then it's calculating uh, the distance from the hips to each landmark point. And this way it's figuring out the depth. Let me show you what this actually means. So I have this uh, figure in here. And so this is what I mean. When you do pose addiction, you get the whole skeleton. And if I wanted to know if these landmark points are closer to the camera or further from the camera, what I can do is, uh, you know, like set an origin point. Uh, I can set this hip as an origin point. And then for each landmark, for example, I want to uh, calculate the distance between the knee point and the hip point. So there will be uh, some distance in pixels if I calculate it right from this point, this angle. But if I move this figurine, closer to the camera, this distance will increase. The, this distance from here to here will increase in pixels. Similarly, if I move it further away from the camera, this distance will decrease in pixels as measured by the camera itself. So this way, for each landmark point, I can get the distance in pixels and figure out if the object or the landmark point, how close is it to the camera or further from the camera. So this is a really neat trick that MediaPipe is using to figure out the depth. And this is pretty cool. All right. All right. So these are the three variables X, Y, Z. By the way, all these three variables are normalized in the sense they will be on the range zero to one. They will not give you the exact location. It will be uh, scaled down. Uh, to zero to one range. You will need to multiply the X with the width of the image to get the actual X coordinate and the Y with the height of the image to get the actual height uh, coordinate. The Z will be in the same uh, particular range. So you can multiply it by any uh, variable like you can multiply it with the width or the height to get a relative uh, Z uh, coordinate. So uh, uh, this is how this works. And th this is done in most of the machine learning or deep learning uh, models. So when you get the output uh, landmarks, it's normally scaled down to zero to one and you have to rescale them back to their original value by multiplying it by the width or the height depending upon uh, their axis. So this is how uh, this will work. One last variable is this one visibility. It's a really interesting one and you might be able to filter out false detection or to run out uh, unnecessary result using this. So what this variable is telling you is pretty simple. I mean, it tells you if the pose landmark points are visible or not. So it gives you confidence. For example, if I do landmark detection on this particular image, right now what uh, my hands are visible, my you know like chest is visible, my face is visible. So the uh, landmark points for these particular locations should be uh, of high confidence. But for the landmark points below, my chest for, uh, you know, like my, my hips and my legs would, you know, like give me a very low number. So they're not visible in the frame. So this visibility variable for those landmark points should be pretty low. But as I move into the frame further and further, you know, like those visibility numbers would jump up. And this way I can figure out if I want to draw those landmarks on the image or not. So this is how I control if I want to draw the whole skeleton out or just a partial skeleton or the partial uh, landmark points on an image. So this is why this variable is pretty useful. All right, now let's move on. So I've printed these two landmark out just to discuss how and what each variable means. As you can see, the scale is uh, from zero to one approximately. And so what I'm gonna do now is get the width and height of the image. This way, I'm going to normalize uh, these X coordinate and Y coordinate by multiplying it with the height, width and the height. And then I'm going to get the actual X, Y uh, point, And then I'm going to plot those out. I'm also normalizing, you know, like back Z 
so I, I can you know like print it out and then I'm also you know like printing out the visibility uh, of the point so I'm um, doing that for both of these points again like I said you can do this stuff for every for each of the 33 landmarks I'm just doing this for these two landmarks to show you what it looks like so let me print it out so these were the raw results and these were the results after I multiplied it with the width and height and got the actual uh, coordinate point. So this is for the nose and this is for the uh, left eye. So now what I'm going to do is finally draw out the whole skeleton. And for that, what I just need to do is call out this uh, MP dot drawing, MP drawing, call out the MP drawing class and use its uh, draw landmark function. So MP drawing dot draw landmarks. I'm going to pass in the image. I'm going to pass in uh, the results dot post landmark points. And then I'm going to pass in this connection. So this is the MP post dot post connection. This is going to tell the drawing function how to connect the dots. Uh, actually, so how to connect each landmark in order to create that whole skeleton around. So which uh, dots to connect together to create the whole skeleton. Uh, by the way, this line alone is doing a lot of drawing and we can again, like I said, I can do all of this with OpenCV itself. But this uh, uh, whole annotation thing is, you know, like being done under the hood by this single line of code. If we were to do this in OpenCV, it would take a couple of more lines, a lot of more lines, you know, like to draw out the whole skeleton and such. All right, so this line is drawing out the whole skeleton using those landmark points. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, plot out uh, the whole landmark with uh, the result with the with Matplotlib library. And this is what we get. So this is the output and the whole skeleton neatly drawn out as you can see here. So one interesting thing that you can do is that maybe you can uh, pass in this function the criteria, you know, like you can set if the visibility is less than a certain uh, threshold, then do not draw out that landmark. So this can be, you know, like uh, done. Something like this can be done. All right. So now one other cool thing that I will show you is how to draw this entire skeleton in 3D using the Z coordinate. So right now we just utilize the XY coordinate to draw out the landmark, but now with uh, media by we have a function we have a function called mp drawing dot plot landmarks and this will draw it in 3d all you have to do is pass in the landmark points and the, we have another variable mp dot post connections and uh, but yeah this, this is the variable that i'm talking about we are not passing the normal uh, results we are passing with results dot pose world landmarks this way what ends up happening is that once we uh, plot this whole landmark out it's going to plot in meters instead of pixels so you're going to see the actual distance of the person from the camera in meters how far away each of his uh, landmark point are in meters so this is a i think this is, was a later update in media pipe so by default we have this function so results dot uh, post landmarks this is the normal uh, landmark point and then we have this results dot post world landmarks this, this will allow you to plot it out in 3d in meters so this is what's what's happening here so this is what this looks like. So these are the results. It's not entirely accurate to the point, but still it tells you a lot. For example, consider this. I mean, this foot is, uh, you know, like a lot behind than this uh, foot. And uh, if you look at this image, as you can see, the, per the person this which is making this uh, karate pose, as you can see, his right leg is further behind than his left leg. And this is reflected in the 3D plot here. You can see this uh, leg further behind and this leg further uh, closer to the camera. And this is the distance in meters, which is, you know, like, uh, which is given to you when you plot this out. So this is in act actually in meters here, not in pixels. So this is again, pretty useful. Uh, I will say this again, if you were using a depth camera, the results of in 3D would be a lot more accurate. But this is the next best thing and you're getting this with a uh, normal uh, 2D camera and in real time. So again, really cool. And if you, you can also do some sort of, you know, like this media pipe has an example, uh, which shows you how you can, you know, like plot this 3D map for real time video fields using Matplotlib on image. I, you know, like there's a lot of code for that, but that's just, you know, like you don't unnecessary code. You don't need to worry about it. If you need something like this, this can also be done, you know, like on, draw out the Matplotlib plot on top of a video. All right. So, all right, finally, let's wrap this up. So all the code above, I'm going to paste all of the code inside this function and call it uh, detect post. 
So this is what I normally do. I explain each of the things step by step and then I take all of the code, put it inside a function and then test it out on a number of images and then test it out on a real time video feed. And I construct this function in a way that it also works on images as well as on videos. So this is my usual workflow. So for this function, it at pose, I've just copied all the code above, pasted it below. It's doing the exact same thing. It's, you know, like taking the image, converting it into RGB. It's, uh, uh, you know, like doing the pose detection. It's uh, getting the height and width. And then it's uh, drawing out uh, the landmarks. If the pose were detected, you need to have this condition because if the pose detection failed to detect an image, you don't need to, you can't draw out the landmark, right? So uh, after you know, like uh, the uh, landmarks are drawn out, what I'm gonna do is store the landmark points in this landmarks array. And then if uh, this display variable is set to true, which is I'm gonna set to true uh, if I am using this method with images. So I'm gonna plot, plot all the results out. Uh, if it's not set to true, if the display is set to false, then I'm gonna re return the results, which means uh, I normally set display to false when I'm working with videos. So I'm gonna return the output image as well as the landmarks true in order to any sort of pre-processing that I want, any sort of you know like uh, uh, utilization, any sort of manipulation of landmarks uh, with it. All right, so I'm gonna uh, run this and the function is now initialized. Now I'm gonna call it this entire function in three different images and show you the results side by side. So first of all, this is the result for this image. This, the, this is the original image. This is the result and this is the 3D mark. As you can see, this clearly tells you that his foot, this one, this foot is further, you know, like a clo clo lot, lot closer to the camera than this one, which is clearly ref reflected in this 3D plot. Let's try it with the next image. And this is what we get. Uh, again, the 3D plot is telling you a lot uh, more uh, than the 2D skeleton. It's telling you how the person is posing the, uh, relative to the camera distance. So pretty useful. Lastly, we have this image and for this image, we have this 2D uh, landmark detection and then we have this 3D uh, pose. All right. Finally, uh, the most exciting thing of this is that to run the pose detection on real time video feed. So let's do that. All right. So let me just briefly go over the code. Uh, we have done the real time thing multiple times. So all I'm doing is uh, uh, setting up the pose detection function again and uh, calling the uh, up the initializing the video capture function with the camera if you have multiple camera you can select uh, 0 1 2 passing you can also work with videos by uh, passing it uh, the video you know uh, sample.mp4 any video file name then i'm you know like uh, name uh, initializing a named window so i can resize the window and then I'm, you know, like on my camera, I'm uh, setting my camera to its highest resolution. This is an optional step. Again, this is also an optional step which I'm doing here. And then I'm initializing a timer to so I can calculate the FPS uh, frames per second. And I'm checking to make sure if the video is open. Is this is an optional step? Normally, sometimes it's not open. You have to open it. And then I'm reading a frame by frame from the uh, camera and I'm making sure if the frame is uh, correctly uh, detected, uh, you know, like red or not. And if it is, then I'm just flipping it so that, you know, like this is the horizontal flipping that I uh, normally do so that it feels more natural in OpenCV. So, and then I'm extracting the width and height of the frame and then I'm resizing it uh, uh, somewhat. And then what I'm doing is uh, detecting the pose on this resized frame. And then I'm, you know, like setting the time uh, for this current frame. And then this is the whole uh, process for, you know, like calculating the FPS frames per second. So this is uh, done here. And then what I'm going to do is, you know, like uh, show the results uh, to you guys. And then if the person presses the escape button, I'm going to uh, grab this uh, escape button with the K variable. And then I'm going to check if the ASCII value appears to 27, which means the person has pressed escape button. I'm going to break out of this video loop and I'm going to release the camera. I'm going to destroy all the OpenCV opened windows. So this is how this whole thing works. Let's run it now. So I guess I'll, you know, like drag this here to here. And so as you can see right now, my only my face is visible. And as I move behind further and further, my whole body you know, like starts to become visible. So if I you know, like stand up, right now I don't have much space in the back. So this is all you're going to get. So yeah, so this is working in real time. As you can see by the FPS, pretty fast, pretty good, pretty accurate. All right, let's 
closes up. Okay. All right, that is all for the post detection. And now we'll move on to a more interesting task, post classification. All right, post classification. This is my favorite part. So uh, the best way to do uh, post classification is that you use a media pipe to get the post landmarks of the body, and then you create uh, a deep learning based system like a perceptron or multi layer perceptron, a simple dense network. You pass in those landmark points, and you train the model to you know like recognize different poses. For example. If I were making a T pose, I will, you know, like uh, grab, uh, get several pictures me of me making a T pose, and then I will extract landmarks from all those pictures and feed it into a multi-layer perceptron. And then similarly, if I want to, um, if I wanted the model to recognize some different poses, so for each pose, for each new pose, I will record several pictures, or maybe you take a short clip and extract frames out of it, and then do landmark detection. Uh, get those landmark points and feed it to the model. This is the best way to do post detection or post classification. But I'm gonna right now avoid creating a whole model and a data set and all that. I'm gonna use simple heuristics, which is just uh, checking if else conditions that if I'm making a particular angle with my uh, uh, you know like arms or legs, and if I'm doing some sort of, uh, making some sort of angles between those, I'm gonna classify it as a certain pose. So this is not as powerful as attaching another deep learning model for classification, but it still works quite well if you're working with a limited number of poses. All right, so let's see how we're gonna do this. So uh, for to accomplish this, what we just need to do is come up with a way to calculate the angles between different points. For example, if I needed this angle, so what I need is that I need an angle uh, with uh, with a line that's you know like joined by the shoulder to the elbow and to the elbow from the elbow to the uh, wrist. So there are two lines here, and what's the angle between those two lines? So I need to figure out that. So for each, uh, you know, like landmark, I need to know what's the angle it's making if you draw a line between those points. So just to solidify this concept, let me show you an exact example what I mean by this. So this is actually pretty simple. What I'm saying is that pick any three landmark points from the body. And what I need is this angle. So if I'm talking about this angle and then these three landmark points would be this uh, elbow point in the middle and then uh, the wrist point here and then the shoulder point here. So this way I can calculate if my hand or my left hand is straight or not. I can get the exact angle, you know, like this particular angle. So similarly, I can do this for the right hand and similarly, I can do this for the legs, for my left leg and right leg. And then again, uh, I can also do this, uh, you know, like with my shoulders here. So what's my, uh, you know, like this angle? And what's what's this angle? So I can get any sort of angles just by defining selecting three uh, uh, points. So three, I just need three landmark points, uh, and then I can uh, get the you know like angle between them. And the math is pretty simple. All I need to do is I'm going to create a function called calculate angle. I'm going to pass in three landmark points, any of my choosing. And then what I'm going to do is you just run this piece of line. This is the simple math formula which calculates the angle between three points. And this is what this uh, does is gives you the angle in degrees. And then you grab the angle, but we need the angle or we need the angle to be positive. So if the angle is negative, which can be depending upon the order of uh, landmark points, we just you know, like add 360 degrees, which just you know, like changes the sign. It it gives you the same angle, but it changes the sign. So then we return the angle. So this is the simple, a simple function which uh, takes in three uh, landmark points and calculates the angle between them, you know, like something like this, and it uh, gives you the angle. And this way, we are going to grab multiple angles between different uh, landmark uh, combinations. And then we're going to do some if else conditioning, some heuristics and figure out what uh, a pose person is making. So, so this is how this is going to work. Let me initialize this function. And just uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to randomly pass in some random points here. And then I'm going to, you know, like print out this function. This, this is how this function will work. The calculating angle is 160 if I pass in these particular uh, point, these particular random points. All right. So now that we have a function that can calculate 
an angle giving three landmark points. Now we need another function which will classify a pose giving you know like uh, the landmark point. So this function will internally call this angle function and then it will classify the pose. All right. So before I start, I will just tell you that uh, the constraint of this whole application is that right now we're working with three poses. You can add more poses, but because we're using heuristics, if the more poses you add, the more complex the problem becomes because you're, you you need to add multiple if conditions if conditions and the whole thing will blow up if you you know like add uh, five to six or seven poses. So if you're uh, adding a lot of poses, you, the best route of action is to use a multi-layer perceptron and you know like the whole process which I just explained feed those landmark points to the model. Maybe I'll make a separate video on on something like this in future. But right now I'm just using heuristics to uh, classify the pose all right so this is what i'm going to do here the initially the label uh, of the, the whole pose will be an unknown pose before any classification is done we don't know what the pose is so i'll label it as an unknown pose all right so now what i'm going to do is grab six particular angle combination so what i'm going to get is left elbow angle so let me show you what i'm going to i'm going to get the left angle at this particular angle i'm going to get this particular angle and then i'm going to get this angle and i'm going to get this angle and then similarly i'm going to get uh, the angle uh, which my legs are making to tell me if my legs are straight or not so this uh, these are the six angle combinations which i'm uh, you know like extracting i'm calling the calculate angle and passing it these three points to get those particular angle combinations so this is what I'm doing right now. And uh, the reason I'm calculating the getting extracting these specific six uh, angles is because I'm classifying these three yoga poses. So there's a warrior two pose, there's a T pose and there's a three pose. You can add more poses just uh, like I said. All right. After getting these three, six angles, what I'm going to do is use, you, uh, you know, do some uh, heuristics. Uh, some, these are just some if conditions. So I'm going to, you know, like check, uh, for example, if uh, I'm going to first check if uh, both my arms are straight, if both my arms are straight, then I'm going to check another thing. If both my, uh, you know, like shoulders are at a certain angle, so which means I'm doing something like this. And then I'm also going to make sure if my legs are straight, which means, which will mean that I'm making a T pose. So this is the condition for the T pose. The T pose condition is that my both legs would be straight, meaning that I'm standing up and then both my, uh, the angle between my shoulders and hair should be like something like 90 degrees or something like that. And then both my, you know, like arms would be straight, meaning, you know, like meaning I'm making a 180 degree uh, angle between uh, uh, th this hair. So 90 degrees here and 180 degrees between both arms here. So this is the condition for the T pose. Similarly for the, there's another pose called the tree pose, which requires a, a, a slightly different uh, angle combination. And then we have another pose called the warrior pose, which requires that my legs, you know, like uh, make uh, certain, uh, you know, like one leg is 90 degrees and one leg is completely straight 180 degrees. So oh, there's that. So this way and both my arms are straight. Both my arms are straight. One leg is uh, I'm making an angle uh, of 90 degrees and one leg is making 180 degrees. So this way there will be a warrior pose. So this is what I'm, you know, like uh, doing the warrior pose here. I think something like, yeah. So this is where I'm checking if uh, I'm making a warrior pose or not. So, yeah. So this is where I'm checking warrior pose. And if uh, any of these conditions does not, does not pass, it, I'm going to label it as an unknown pose because I'm have, all the condition fails. Uh, it will be an unknown pose. So one uh, another on of this, uh, you know, like system is that if you're using heuristics, a lot of times you, you might not get the ideal results because there will be a lot of flickering because uh, you have to be, you know, like the camera should be straight up in front of you and you should be making the poses correctly, you know, like standing straight in front of the camera, making the poses correctly. But if you were using an M MLP system, then you might have, you know, like you might, you know, twist around, well, you know, like generating the data. So there will be a lot of variations initially encoded in the model. So the model would understand even if you, you twist around, but if you're using heuristics, this, this becomes a problem. When you're using heuristics and if it's in conditions, you have to make sure all the things are perfect. The camera is there right in front of you. You're making the poses correctly. So this, this is a major constraint when you're using heuristics. But, but the, the major advantage here is that I just have to put a bunch of if conditions. I don't need to train a model. I don't need to gather data and my post classification system is ready. So this is the major advantage of using heuristics. So 
anyways so once uh, you know like i have uh, generated uh, put up those if conditions based on the three specific poses that i want what i'll do is just you know like if display set to true i'll show it if it's not i'm going to return it this is for again if i'm working with images or if i'm working with videos i'm going to just initialize and uh, save this function and then the fun part i'm going to uh, test this model out on images so this is the warrior 2 pose so this is how the warrior 2 pose looks like as you can see, it's recognizing the warrior two pose. Uh, all right. So, and this is another uh, pose. So, yeah, this is warrior two pose again. And then there's a, the three pose. The condition for all these poses are listed here. What sort of angles should be made between the body parts? And for the tree pose, this is going to be something like this. So the tree pose had, uh, you know, has some sort of variations here. Right now, I think the model is loading up. All right. So this is the tree pose. This is how this looks like. Here's another tree pose. So all of both of these are, uh, you know, like considered as tree pose. I'm not an expert in yoga. <laughs> I just grabbed these images from the internet. So yeah, the tree pose. This is also considered as tree pose, tree pose, and tree pose. Uh, I guess. Uh, so uh, this is just my limited knowledge on yoga from the internet. I just grabbed the images. So if there's any yoga enthusiast watch, I mean, I don't know why I air quoted this yoga enthusiast watching this. Uh, please uh, ignore uh, any. Yeah, mistakes that I make here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, th these are the tree poses and this is the T pose. So this is the T while you're just standing still making a T here, simple as that. So this is another T pose. All right, let's put, just put one last image here. And all right, so these were the uh, two other T pose. And if you see, if I make a random pose, then it would be classified as, as an unknown pose. And by the way, this is a Cobra pose. So you can also put uh, some if else conditions so that the, it recognizes this sort of pose as a Cobra pose. All right, and there's uh, there are inst instructions for that here uh, below. So you can go ahead, once you've watched this video, go ahead and run this uh, notebook and read the comments, read the, uh, the, the instructions I've provided. I've, I've not covered, I've not explained maybe some points that are already mentioned in the notebook and there may be some other points mentioned in the blog post. So I've very, uh, you know, like covered a lot of these things in detail. So make sure to get the most out of it. The code is highly documented and you know, like completely structured out. All right, finally, the thing, my, the, the last, you know, like um, the cherry on top is that we're going to run the post classification, test it out on a real time webcam feed. Since uh, the, the space is not enough in the back, I've already recorded a video. So uh, I'll be showing it uh, to you now. All right. But before I uh, you know, like do that, let me just briefly go over the code. This is the same code, uh, the same code, which I've just uh, used to do the post uh, detection. Uh, nothing new here just except the models the name of the model is changed you know, like after the detection is done i'm checking if there is landmarks then classify the pose and then show the results that's it nothing's new here so once you run this uh, let me just show you the already saved video annotation result which i which i previously you know run let me show you here all right So that was it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like it and tell me in the comments how you find it. And by the way, I'll be releasing a course on media pipe in a couple of weeks from now. It will be a totally different course, something I've never done before. It will be totally an application based. But in the coming up weeks, I'll be releasing a number of exciting videos on uh, this channel. So uh, make sure to watch out for that. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.